All right, we back on game, and I gotta say this right now. There is so much to talk about, and I wanna tell you right now that this video is gonna be very FGC heavy because so much has happened in the previous two weeks that has to be addressed. I cannot believe that these people are this fucking stupid. And I feel bad for the FGC, I really do. Because there are so many people in it that are saying, no, this is bullshit, this shouldn't be happening. But these people that you are letting run this, and when I say run this, at this point, run it into the fucking ground. That's what it is. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that I'm seeing this. I don't know whether to be angry or just laugh at this shit, because it's so bad. It is. But before we get started on that shit, alright, I really do need to talk about other issues. Alright? So let's start with... Some hypocrisy, okay? Let's start with that. For those who don't know, the UN is discussing banning Japanese games containing sexual violence. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't these the same people who went to the UN and complained to the UN? Didn't they say that gaming needed to grow up? Didn't they say that they wanted more adult themes so that they can play these games? Because, you know, just the, the, the basic stuff isn't there, you know, it's, it's too childish now. So now you're having these type of themes, and now you want to ban them? You want to ban them now. Didn't they say that they weren't going to try and take away your games? Didn't they say that as well? And what's happening? First off, the UN doesn't have the power to do that anyway. Japanese developers are pretty much going to be like, okay, yeah, we hear you. We're just going to act like we hear you and just keep doing our thing. They're not going to listen to the fucking UN. But the fact is that they would even attempt to do some shit like this. Don't the UN have better issues to deal with than this? I'm just saying. I just want you to realize just what's going on here. And it's not just about gaming and, and, and being adult and, 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 and all the narratives that we have seen as late, you know, sexism and gender, politics and all that shit. No, this is an attack on gamers in general. That's what it is. Even if you are so far removed from this debate when it comes to, you know, gender politics and, and sexism and gaming, so far removed, it still affects you because they're still going to start banning games now. That's right. But you wanted more adult themes. Okay. Also, in more news, the FBI thinks gaming will help defeat extremist propaganda. That's right, the FBI. So let me get this straight. When you're seeing this propaganda right now, all right, because they came out with their own game, whatever, you know, and that's not the point. The point is, you think gaming is going to defeat extremist propaganda. Do you realize what's going on now, FBI? Have you not looked into it? Because as far as I'm concerned, that's where you should start. Have you not seen extremist propaganda? Have you not seen the media outlets? Have you not? Okay, okay. But you think that coming out with the game is going to help. Okay, all right. In all facets of extremist propaganda. You do realize that extremist propaganda it doesn't just reside on the internet, right? That you gotta go out there, you know, actually put, you know, walk the streets and put the boots to work, you know what I mean? Look at stuff and see that how people are acting. But you don't want you you think that gaming's gonna help it, huh? Okay. Okay. What have you done for gaming again, FBI? What have you done? Because last time I checked you were getting into people's uh what was it? You were getting into their uh, their accounts. You were you were spying on people to see if there were any terrorism going on or any sexism. You see, we've been seeing a lot of this as of late, haven't we? As gamers, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any more news? All right, <laughs> because you know they've been on our case since uh, was it? Gamers are murderers because they play violent games, right? Check this out. Kids who play shoot 'em up games in the '90s were probably mostly okay. So what you're saying is it's a generation gap. That this new generation that are playing games, and they mentioned that video games were linked to Sandy Hook, the shooting, right? So you're telling us, even though they tried to link video games to, uh, was it Columbine? They tried to link video games. Hell, they tried to link D&D &D to the devil worshipping. I mean, it never stops. It doesn't. And you're going to sit here and say that kids in the 90s, when they played their shooting most, they were probably okay. But kids these days, oh no, it's completely different. And they think of the children and blah, 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 blah. That's what you're saying. <laughs> so technically what you're saying is today's generation are too fucking sensitive. They're too fucking emo. That, okay, okay. But I think that's unfair to say. I really do think it's unfair to say, especially when just not too long ago, we just talked about where the FBI is looking into all these other things, you know, they got to go into accounts and going on servers and seeing what's going on and the sexism and the terrorism and murderers and rapists and worse than ISIS and all these other things that didn't fucking called you. Okay, whatever. I, it's just... <laughs> 
But you know what? That's fine. Let's move on from that, please. Can, can we please move on from that? Because I want to talk about one Scooby-Woo. That's right, Scooby-Woo has done it again by saying that Resident Evil 4 was the first game to come up with QTEs. So either I'm going to chalk this up to you lying, Scooby-Woo, which you have done in the past, or you really aren't that much of a gamer because you don't know the history of gaming. Anybody who played games back in the day would know that Dragon's Lair and Space Ace were like the granddaddies of them. For you to sit and say that Resident Evil 4, what's wrong with you? But then you go even further and you start lying. Because then you bring up Street Fighter 5 and say how much of a hardcore fighting game player you really are. So hardcore fighting player, huh? So you've been playing a lot of Super Street Fighter 4 to get ready for Street Fighter 5, right? Okay, so you weren't playing Super Street Fighter 4, you weren't playing Ultra, um... Maybe you were playing Mortal Kombat X, you know what I mean? Maybe you are a little, you know, distracted. You were playing that because, you know, it's still one of the top games right now to play, right? So you, maybe you were playing Mortal Kombat X? Look, Scooby, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, but it seems to not be working. Maybe, maybe since Tekken 7 has been announced and we've been seeing all these trailers and gameplays, maybe you were playing Tekken Tag Tournament to warm up for that? Alright, you know what? I tried. You're not a hardcore fighting game player. You're lying. I put it like this. If you're a hardcore fighting game player, you're playing online, which you still duck challenges. Everybody challenges you. You say it's harassment or you block them. So guess what? You're not playing those people. You're not going to tournaments. You're not playing there. Where are you playing? You're playing the computer. That's what you're doing. And we don't even know if you're playing on the highest level or the person you possibly live with. You're not a hardcore player. You're a casual. Call it as it is. It's that simple. Stop being something that you're not. And we're seeing this way too often as a late. And I will talk about that soon. But let's roll more into this type of fighting game stuff before, you know, before I get really into it, all right? First off, in more news, we know that Kim Kardashian has her own little game. We also know that last week Taylor Swift has her own little game. And I challenge Taylor Swift. The challenge is still there. But, but. Kim Kardashian gets a follow-up video game starring her sisters now. That's right. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the fact that we found out this week that Kanye West, that's right, I gotta talk about this, Kanye West is $53 million in debt. And y'all already know how I feel about Kanye West because every time I say Kanye West, what do I say? Fuck Kanye West. That's how I still feel about Kanye West. But the fact that he went on Twitter and cried and said, give me money, give me money, I need one billion dollars, I need one billion dollars, and he wants people to invest in him, then he actually had the nerve to get on people who were building schools in Africa, yes, he actually said this, y'all not helping the country, y'all could be giving me the money, this is what he actually said, like this guy is fucking idiot, the reason why I'm saying this right now, is because Kanye... If you really want to get out of debt, maybe you should think about going into the Capcom Pro Tour. I'm just saying. I mean, let's be honest here. The FGC, once they found out you were playing Street Fighter, what did they do? They started sucking your dick off real good, didn't they? So maybe you can make some money that way. I'm just saying, okay? So, think of that thought, Kanye. Speaking of the Capcom Pro Tour, for those who don't know, Capcom Pro Tour Australia, uh, Australian Nationals have been announced. That's right. I want to talk about what happened and we knew it was going to happen, so why not just get to it right now, all right? Lupe versus Daigo. Now, we talked about this, and I told you before, you shouldn't take this seriously. This is a game for fun. It's an exhibition. You should know, what did I say? The only way Lupe will win is if Daigo lets him. That's how it went down. I also said to you that the promotion for this, two weeks in a row now, that the promotion for this was piss poor, and that this was going to come down to try and be acting. Now, mind you, Markman had said... Everyone was in the loop. Everything was fine, right? Remember they had said that? I want you to listen to this absolute bullshit during this fight. I want you to listen to commentators. This is before the fight. Before the fight. Lupe's just getting there. Just getting there. Okay? I want you to hear how they're going to sit here and lie to you straight to your face about, apparently, this beef that they're having between each other, between Daigo and Lupe. Strong. Yes. The Twitch culture is out here. Oh, see what I'm saying? He's yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, Kojima Senpai has noticed me, and now I want to put Daigo Senpai on notice. Mm -hmm. Twitter beef turned into reality. Yes. Here we are on President's. 
Twitter beef turned into reality. Twitter beef. That's what they're saying. So you're telling me two guys who never talked to each other, okay, and they needed a third party, which Markman had to go and make to set this, uh, this fight up. That's the Twitter beef that you're talking about. Matter of fact, I'll show you the tweet again, because Twitter beef turned into reality. Trying to make this more than what it is, lying right to your face with bullshit. We know that this fight wasn't going to be anything. Nobody in the FGC took this shit seriously until they tried to promote it as something serious. And as you can hear during this, you know, before the fight, they tried to make this serious. Leave this shit, this wrestling shit, leave it the wrestling. It's that simple. It's the same thing when I showed you guys and girls, when I showed you that video where those two guys, when they were in that tournament, and then one guy won. Oh, we got a pop-off. We got a pop-off. And it wasn't a pop-off. It was just two dudes shaking hands. That's all it was. Like, this is the shit I'm talking about. You gotta try and make it more than what it is. Why can't we just watch the match for what it is? We know this, like I said, when Markman said it himself, before this shit went down, he said, we're hoping it's competitive. We're hoping. We don't think it's gonna be, but we're hoping it is. And this shit wasn't competitive. We knew it wasn't. When you got Lupe just doing Shahrukhin, Dragon Punch, Dragon Punch, throw, Dragon Punch, throw, that's all he's doing, and we can see this shit. We know what Daigo can do, and we know that he's sandbagged. We knew this. But as soon as you tried to take it seriously, then your audience start, start taking it seriously. And when Daigo sandbagged, what happened? People got pissed. People say it was collusion. People started saying they threw a fight. If you don't believe me, here are the tweets. I remember when Markman said to me, he said, you know, this is going to help the FGC, so I have no problem with this. And I had said, I don't have no problem with the match because we knew it was going to be real. But don't sit here and tell me that this helped the FGC. If anything, it made it look like a fucking circus. You got your arguably the best player in the world when it came to Street Fighter. Arguably, okay, in Daigo, you had him lay down and take a dive to a celebrity. And then when this happened, we had other people say, in the FGC, well, I guess the top player treatment or celebrity status is real. It must be real, because for those who don't know, since this has happened, Lupe Fiasco now is number one in the leaderboard when it comes to competitive play, because he beat Daigo. This was a publicity stunt, you know, emphasis on stunt, all right, with bad promotion and bad results. You literally set up your best player to, mm -mm, that's, that's not how you do things, all right? It's really not. Like I said, these dudes need a lesson in promotion. They do. They need a lesson in it. It's absolutely ridiculous that these guys are still around doing this type of shit. Like I said, it just weakens the FGC, as far as I'm concerned. Twitter beef come re to turn reality. Fucking kidding me. How about stupidity go real? You got me, oh my God. Can't be real for one fucking second. I don't get it. I, j I, just, I just don't. But for everyone who's screaming collusion, sandbagging all that, yep, remember, they're in the loop. In the loop. You know who wasn't in the loop? How about this? After this, Markman officially parts ways with Mad Cats. So I guess everyone wasn't in the loop. Oh! Anyways, I'm sure Markman will land back on his feet. I'm sure he'll go somewhere else. But you've got to be kidding me that within all of this, and I've seen so much backlash from this, and that, that's why I feel so strongly about it. Like, like I said, they just went the wrong way about it. They did. It hurt the FGC, and I'm going to show you even more people who hurt the FGC this, you know, this week alone. I should say this week, like earlier this week. And like I said, FGC is taking losses, but we should move on. And I do want to talk more about Street Fighter, all right? Street Fighter V, for those who don't know, apparently GameStop came out and said that you can't find Hot Ryu. So it should go tell you right there, all right, that they're listening to these other media outlets, all right? Hot Ryu on Tinder. You can't buy them on Tinder, but you can pre-order them at the GameStop. And with that tweet being posted, because, you know, Twitter beef turned reality, yeah, all right, people were outraged because of the double standard. So you can censor Armika, and you can censor Cami, okay? But you're going to promote sexuality in Hot Ryu. That's what you're doing. So people were naturally offended by this due to the fact that, like I said, it's a double standard. How dare you shit lords do this, this, you know, and sexism and gender politics and and then you do that. And yet Zangief is somewhere on the side like, I've been here for years, been objectified, but no one's talked about me. I feel bad for Zangief, I really do. I feel bad for Blanca as well. Yeah, no one ever talks about them.
It's, it's, it's kind of sad, but there's more. And you know what? I want to give a big shout out to Street Fighter V modders. Love you guys. And girls, whoever. Love you. You want to know why? <laughs> PC modders give Armika and Street Fighter V her butt slap back and Neil Gaff goes crazy. They just explode. And just, the feels were all there. Everywhere. And it's hilarious. But here's the thing. Afterwards, NeoGaf had their reaction. Gamers and Street Fighter V modders diss NeoGaf and Capcom. So I will put both links in the info bar so you can see what's being said. Because literally, they're like, fuck NeoGaf, fuck Capcom. Like, they're just going off. It's, it's, really, it's really hilarious to watch. I mean, seriously. Just remember, people. When you're putting back in something that originally was there. That's original content. Okay? Regardless if you agree with it or not. It's original content. And I know a lot of people say, well, we can put a lot of things back in if that's the case. Yeah, you could. You could. I mean, it is original content. People want what they're paying for. Speaking of things that you want what you pay for, let's talk about Street Fighter V, shall we? Let's just talk about this train wreck of a game, all right? Because Capcom, you know, it hit the stores. We know that. And it's taking a hit right now, as we know. Capcom, how do you not have arcade mode? How is that even possible? You are paying $60 Pretty much, that they don't even give you the standard features of today's games. They don't. And you're paying $60 for this. This isn't even a full, I should say, a full game. And we're going to talk about that because the ratings say enough. Gamers who actually put their trust in Capcom, because let's be honest, we really thought that Capcom would learn from their situation. And Capcom, you didn't. Again. You went and screwed gamers. And gamers are now speaking out, especially when it comes to ratings. As of yesterday, because that's when this screenshot was taken, 102,071 people reviewed this game, and that's not mentioning all the other people that are complaining. I'm sure it's higher now, but it got a 42% rating. That is unacceptable, Capcom. It is. Not only that, the media started blitzing this game as well, because Street Fighter V gets a 1.5 out of 5. A 1.5! That's crazy! A 1 point, is the game that broken that it deserves a 1.5 out of 5? And they're talking about the lack of features that you have. Lack of story mode, which apparently you're going to have to wait to get more. Let's be honest here. They, they said they gave you less options when it came to single player mode because they want you to play on their networks. That's what they wanted you to do, right? But that's not all. No, Street Fighter and the media, again, Street Fighter V is an unfinished game. And you know what? I've seen a number of gamers say the same thing. It seems like everyone right now is pretty much in, in you know, they're, they're pretty much on, on, on track with this. Everyone who is saying it's an unfinished game. Like I said, you just cut out so many features and you just thought that you could sell this for a $60 price point. That's absolutely ridiculous. It is. This is not the days back in the days of Nintendo, or I'm sorry, Super Nintendo, when Street Fighter 2 first came out. You know what I mean? You paid X amount of hours. I paid $75 for that game. You know what I mean? And we didn't have these options. But you know what? I still play that game. I still have that game. So for $75 I paid for it, guess what? It was well spent. But as time has gone on, we have gotten better features, more features that have become a standard, a staple in this type of thing. And then you go backwards. You went backwards. And you expect people to just be okay with this. No. And if anyone's defending this, I feel fucking sorry for you. There's something wrong with your ass. All right? But there's more. Street Fighter Online issues undermine Exemplary Fighter. Nobody is saying that the game itself, gameplay-wise, isn't solid, okay? Nobody's saying it, even though we're seeing a lot of people. Some people messaged me the other day saying that I feel as though I'm unwanted in this game because, you know, and they're just trying to, new, trying to figure out the game. We're seeing a lot of people uh, have a lot of difficulty learning the game, even though this game has been watered down for casuals. So we'll have to see, you know, what happens when it comes down in the future, what they're going to do. Because let's be honest, they said that this is going to be the only copy of this game. That means they're going to have to do a number of fixes. First off, bug fixes have to be done. That has That's number one, all right? Then you're going to have to dick around with the characters and play around. We know how this goes, all right? Instead of having all these versions, they're going to do a number of updates. Hopefully, they don't charge you for these updates. You know what I mean? They give them to you for free. Hopefully, you know, I don't want to hear Capcom's going to pull, well, it's an expansion, so you're going to have to pay for it. I know I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm not trying to hear that's how you'll have to pay it just to get your update. That's bullshit, all right? But there's more. That's right. Capcom network issues are getting better, claims Capcom. I find that funny because after what I saw last night 
over a Dr. Rectangle stream. No, the issues weren't getting better. It damn near was unplayable at times. It was so choppy, people were teleporting from one side of the screen to the other. Don't tell me it's getting better. It's not. And anyone who's watched anybody play Street Fighter V when it comes to... No, it, it's, there's ob obviously there's problems. There is. And it needs to be fixed ASAP. As we know, Ono has already came out and apologized so much for the network issues. If anything, you shouldn't be, you know, you really shouldn't be apologizing just yet for network issues. And I'll put it like this. I understand you want to apologize for it because you didn't learn your lesson with Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 4 Vanilla, shall we talk about this? Street Fighter 4 Vanilla had a huge problem with online connection. And yet, you didn't learn from that, did you? No. The fact that you hyped this game up to the fucking moon, alright, <laughs> and this is what you bring out, lack of features, bad online, people are pissed off, they're going to be, they have every right to be because they paid a $60 price tag, which this game is not worth $60, mind you, given the content that's in it, it's not worth $60, but the online is a problem. It is. And not only that, we've seen so many disconnections when it comes to people posting their disconnection rate on Twitter, on Facebook. Not only that, now people are getting upset because you can receive a trophy simply for waiting in the game. I don't understand why you would need a trophy for that. I guess this is the equivalent of if you were back in the arcade days, you put your quarter up on the machine, you went to the back of the line, and you just waited, and you sat there, and you waited, and you waited, and then when you finally get up to the front of the line, I guess at this point, if it was still around, if I got to the front of the line, put my quarter in, a guy would just walk over and be like, here's your trophy. I just, I don't understand it. I really don't. However, I will say, the things that I have seen online, where people complain about hitbox issues when it comes to the characters, and they're showing you examples. Screenshots, they're showing you video. Like, there's a number of issues that this game has that needs to be fixed. And these are, you know, the people are saying, this is why I don't like this game. So they're providing you with examples, which are legit criticisms which hey you can't get on because they're showing you what i don't like or what i've seen as a late as players who claim that they're old school players which they're not jump on the bandwagon to bag on this game so you've been playing street fighter since street fighter 4 vanilla and that makes you an old school veteran of street fighter okay <laughs> Why do people play themselves? Why do you have to try and be more than what you really are? Why can't you just be real? What's the problem? I don't get it. But for people who did want to see some problems that this game does have, this is one, just one example of what many people have been saying. This is the reason why they don't like the game right now, because of bugs and glitches. Now, I know a lot of people watch this saying, yo, that's really messed up, they need to fix this. But remember, Guilty Gear, they also had the same problem before. Now, I know a lot of people just watching that are going to say, well, it's training mode and whatever. That's not the point. It shouldn't happen to begin with. Come on. These, this game, Street Fighter V, let's be honest here, all right? It, it had its beta. People were, it was pretty much a glorified trial. That's what Street Fighter V right now is, the unfinished version, if that's what you want to call it. Glorified trial. That's what it is, all right? They greenlit this. They sent it out. They knew what they were doing. They let this slide regardless. This is something that needs to be fixed, bottom line. Let's be real here, all right? I want to move on from Street Fighter V and this train wreck until it gets fixed. I'm sure we will see more in the upcoming week of when people find more stuff out about it, more bugs, more glitches, or whatever's fixed. We'll see more. I'm sure we will. Okay? So, we'll stay on the case with that. But I want to move on to Smash. That's right. Last week, we talked about Bayonetta, did we not? And I said the salt was coming. The salt's coming. And what happened when she was released? The salt, it's here. All right? We've seen people say Bayonetta isn't as strong as she should be, and we're seeing other people saying, no, she's OP as fuck. There's no reason to have Bayonetta. She's making everyone fucking salty. Just stop this. I'll put it like this. If your salt level for Bayonetta in Smash isn't up enough, well, guess what? This video may just make it higher. I 
cannot wait to see more rage. I just can't. I think it's hilarious to me. Smash fans that get mad over Bayo to me. It's a thing of beauty. It really is for me. It's very entertaining for me to watch. Um, also, I want to move on. King of Fighters news. The new King of Fighters trailer has just released. Uh, was it? Was it? Uh, was it yesterday? It released. Um, for what I've seen, this game is looking spectacular. I, I'm not even mad at it. This game looks great. As far as I'm concerned, I still have a problem with the specials and the close-up zoom. Like it's almost like Street Fighter. Other than that. This game looks like it. this is a day one buy. This game looks amazing, as far as I'm concerned. I really hope that it's very successful, because they look like they put a lot of work into this. It does. Um, also, to move on, MK News. Now, I know PC fans are very upset that WB took away, pretty much stopped supporting M, you know, MKX. But some of you guys messaged me not too long ago, and you said, no worries, event. We modders took care of Mortal Kombat. We got Shinnok, but not in the way that you would think. I love it. I'm not even mad. Like, why can't you, mad? you can't even get mad at it? I feel that is amazing. However, there are some things I can get mad at, and I will talk about right now since we're on MK News. I will say this. Like I said, FGC, you've been taking a lot of hits as of late, and this is no, uh, no exception. I got a chance to sit and watch MK Chasing the Cup, right? By Machinima, who was on the CW. Remember we talked about that last week it was coming? So I had a chance to watch that because I recorded on DVR. I have to say, it is the most, it's the single most, most immature thing I've ever seen. It is. You've got grown men smashing controllers on the ground. You've got grown men sitting and saying, I lost to the tournament, and I feel as though my soul is gone. Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Like, come on, you lost at a game. Your soul has not been taken from you. Well, unless you're using... Shang Sun somewhere, but he's not in MKX. But the fact is, there's no way you can sit here and say that. There was one dude who said, I want to win this game, this this tournament, this ESL. I want to win a tournament, $60,000, because it would be a good start. A good start. $60,000. A good start to get out of my home. Then when they showed this dude's home, he was sitting up in the suburbs and what looked like, at, at, I would say at an estimated value, looked like a $300,000 house. you got to be fucking kidding me. You're in a great living condition, and you're talking about $60,000 is a good start to get out. You do realize that people get out of bad areas with less. You understand it, right? It was absolutely mind-blowing to see guys who lost literally would cry, shed tears, shed tears over losing in a video game. Are you fucking serious? Like, this had to, this, this had to be the biggest stereotype of gamers I've ever seen. 
And what I mean by that is, you push the stereotype that gamers sit in their fucking houses, they have no concept of reality, and you act like a bunch of man-children, a bunch of babies, when it comes to these games. It's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that you thought that if they were filming this, that it was going to work in your favor. Did you really think that? This, this All it did was hurt the FGC even more. Because you pushed a stereotype. Congratulations, you played yourself. You did. You can't sit here and tell me you didn't. Unreal. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to throw a controller on the ground because I lost. I swear to God, this is exactly what I mean when I showed you last week about athletes. What the athletes say about people in esports. We don't respect you. We don't respect you. And when you're doing shit like this, this is exactly why. When Cam Newton lost in the Super Bowl, what did he do? He smiled and he shook Peyton Manning's hand. And when he got up there on the podium and he was next to, you know, the other team's, you know, players and they were talking shit, what did he do? He was like, I don't have really anything to say. Very calmly got up and walked out, did he not? We saw the backlash from that. However, in MK chasing the cup, when one guy lost, they wanted to interview him. He went off. I don't want to fucking be interviewed. No, don't interview me right now. He was so mad and so emotional. Can you imagine if these so-called esports guys had to be professional, like regular athletes? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine when you're seeing these guys say, I lost in a tournament, I feel like I lost my soul. It tells me you wouldn't even be able to deal with reality. I've got to go and call daddy now. Are you fucking serious? You are a grown-ass man. Unreal. I cannot believe this. And like I said, this, this show was gold. For all the wrong reasons. If anybody had a problem with gamers. And hated gamers. All they had to do was point to this fucking show. Because you did every little thing. That was expected of you. For people who hate gamers. That's what you did. You fucked over the FGC. You thought this was going to be cool. The only people who seemed to have some type of sense about them. When they were speaking. Was Sonic Fox and Scar. The top two at the end. They seemed like the only two. Everyone else act like fucking idiots, it seems, that we're, that we're speaking. It goes to show you at one point where, um, what is it, they were having, uh, what was it, the two guys were, the two brothers were, uh, what was it, they were in their house and they were playing MKX, and they were actually, it was a honeybee, and they, they were playing MKX, and they looked like they were actually having fun. They looked like they were having fun. That's what they should have showed more. You know what I mean? But no, we got to see... The rage, we got to see people get upset, throw stuff, cry, you know, and understand, they're trying to say, I'm sure the TV is saying, well, that's good for drama. Yeah, but it doesn't help our fucking community. I can't believe that this, like, this shit was, it's embarrassing. It was fucking embarrassing. And people who took part and did their part to be embarrassing, you should be ashamed of yourself. And these are the people that you want to fucking, I'm telling you, per, people like Perfect Legend who did that, people like Pig and Hut who did that, you know, like... These are the people you praise. These are the people. As far as I'm concerned, it's time for the fucking, for my old school gamer, it's time for the old guard to move on and let the new blood step in. Because at least at the new blood, you know, these kids, when they say something stupid, at least you can chalk it up to inexperience. You can chalk it up to immaturity. They don't know any better. These are grown ass men acting like this. Unreal. Unreal. These dudes would have respect. Like I said, I put it like this. If these dudes are getting like this over a fighting game, I would love to see how they would do in a ring or in a cage. As soon as they, you put them in training, I can see it now. They get hit with a couple of shots just for half a round. And they can't get a, 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 you know, a punch off themselves. They'll get frustrated and throw their hands up like a bunch of sissies as far as I'm concerned. This is bullshit. It is. This show was absolutely atrocious. And it's not just because of the way they filmed it. And having Ed Boone there. Hey guys, I'm happy you're there. I'll put it like this. The best thing that came out of it was the, the when they showed the ESL title. That was about it. That was about it. You know what I mean? You can't get on the young guys because like I said, you can chalk it up to inexperience. But these grown ass men, there's something fucking wrong. You are delusional as fuck. Seriously. There's something wrong with you. Unreal. And, and we're supposed to be okay with that. And here's the thing as well. Because this is happening, alright? Because this is over. Now there's a new eSports show. Because for some reason, this is happening now. We talked about this last week. It's, you know, they're, they're shown on NFL Network. They showed it on, you know, CW for Mortal Kombat. Now the E-League, that's right, is premiering on TBS. 
And how much you want to make a bet, this is going to be more of the same. Guys getting mad when they lose, throwing shit, acting a fool. I mean, seriously, when I showed you guys these type of videos, especially in FGC, when people were raging and throwing stuff, what did you tell me years ago? And all to now, you keep sitting here, you keep defending it, you're saying, well, they're isolated incidents. This doesn't happen on the regular. Every once in a while, you'll see someone pop off, and that's it. And, that, and you, you kept saying it's an isolated incident. This is not how the, you know the community is. They're doing this on fucking national TV now. This is not YouTube. This is not someone who just happened to pull out a camera like you used to say before. Well, they don't realize they're being you know put on camera and they're acting this way during a tournament. They're actively on camera. The shit is on them. National TV, and they're still pulling this shit. And you still want to sit and defend it, huh? You know, I want to move on. Because that's the problem we have. We have too many people. Well, meet me above ground, please. Because your heads are too much in the fucking sand at this point. I, I want to move on. Alright? The National Video Game Museum opens in San Francisco this April. And you know what? For those in San Francisco, I would, I would really say, uh, please, by all means, go check it out. You know what I mean? It needs a good showing. This is how places like this stay, you know, stay open. Because the community is there for it to support it. So please... People in San Francisco support it. Also, in more news, Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2 is getting its own toy line coming in the winter. So they're doing this big. They think that Titanfall 2 is going to be bigger than Titanfall 1. Remember, last week, they, they said it was going to get its own TV show. You know what I mean? It's going to get its own toy line now on top of the game coming out. They are pushing this all the way. They want to make sure that Titanfall is pretty much, let's be honest here. EA is going to throw so much money at this, they're going to hope that it rivals Call of Duty. They're hoping. That's what they want. Big robots. And then what happened in the last Titanfall? Uh, well, I guess we can stop giving you robots. And then now you can do, uh, they had to update it. You can do uh, matches without the robots. Just play the fucking Titanfall then. That was the entire hook of Titanfall was the robots. But, okay. We'll keep moving on. And this is really funny. Pay $10 million, people. Give $10 million and get Dying Light and a role in a movie that may not exist. Yeah. So they want you to pay $10 million to get the game and in a, the, the, be in a role in a movie. You don't know what type of role it's going to be. You could be an extra. You never know. All right. But in a movie that doesn't even fucking exist yet. It may not. These people are fucking crazy. Do you really need these type of promotions? Promotions are such ass these days. They just are. Let's move on. In more news, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Is coming in 2018 and will be a mix of live action and animation. As much as I want to say this is going to be bad, I think it's best I just I just hold back and wait. I'll just hold my judgment and see exactly what they're going to do. Let's see some trailers first and see how it's going to be. And then, you know, if it's horrible, we'll tear it the fuck apart. You know what I mean? But let's move on. Dark Souls news. Some good Dark Souls news. That's right. A lot of Dark Souls news. Dark Souls 3 season pass and backwards compatibility original game details have been linked. Uh, have been, I'm sorry, have been leaked. So, link will be in the info bar is that for that. Also, Dark Souls 3 season pass offers access to two epic DLC packs. Okay? So, they should be very large expansion DLC packs. Also, in more Dark Souls news, okay? Bandai Namco is offering anybody Anybody, $10,000, that's right, to whoever can tell the best Dark Souls story. So people, Dark Souls fans, by all means, get to it, $10,000, all you gotta do is tell them a story. Seriously, open up Word and start writing a story. Not that big of a deal. $10,000 is on the line, that's right. Now, we need to talk a little bit, since we're in this whole dark mood of Dark Souls, maybe even darkish, maybe even trying too hard to be darkish, we should say. Devil May Cry. That's right. Fanboys have resurfaced for Devil May Cry Dante, and you know what? Now they're writing articles that the game didn't get a fair shake. You know, the ass hurt from this community, and I say this community, what I mean is this new game's fan base, because this game is how old? And you're still complaining over, you're still crying over the fact, it didn't get a fair shake. Really? It deserved better. Uh, you know what, at this point, I think that these fans wanted this game to be good just to shut other fans up. I think they're going against the grain just to do it. Because if you played the game, if you watched if you watched a walkthrough, if you saw the dialogue, how did this game deserve better? Did you see the way the shit went down? Did you did you watch did you listen to the dialogue? Did you read the subtitles? Did you, did, did, did you? 
Fuck you. My dick is bigger. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? Like, this is... You've got to be kidding. For all the shit that Ninja Theory stole from and just rammed it all together and thought that if they put it in the pot and just mixed it up, that people would like it. Like, I can't... I, there's not one... No. I, there's, there's no logical, reasonable explanation you can sit and say that this game deserved better. It got what it got. That's simple. Bottom line. Okay? And then to say that the franchise, that the franchise itself was failing, um, hello, Devil May Cry 4 sold more than any other Devil May Cry. It sold more than, guess what? DMC! Numbers don't lie, bruh! Um, there's a reason they had to keep coming out. They said, the game sold so badly that Capcom had to keep making iteration after iteration after iteration of it. Try to get you to buy it again. We saw the sales. No one was buying it on Steam and on PSN. They had to drop it on Steam. People said that they were getting it for free for PS on PS Plus, and they didn't even bother downloading it. Like, come on, face reality. It's. But you know what? What's really funny is that this new game. For those who don't know, remember we've talked about. This, I showed the trailer before for Nightcry. Remember I showed that. You know, it's successor for um, as we know, uh, Clock Tower is a successor, or, or should I say spiritual successor. All right. And guess who shows up in the game? Dante! You're back, Nomsi! We missed you! Fuck you! Oh, don't be that way, Dante! You know we love you! Come on! Give us a hug! Come on! Anyways, look, I'll put it like this. Since Dante is in this game, or should I say, Harry, okay? Let's see what happens to Dante in this game. Now, like this, this is a spoiler for Nightcry. So, if anyone does not want to see what happens, I'm going to give you five seconds, five, to either, you know, to either stop the video for, or fast forward so you don't have to worry about it. Three, and we will see exactly what happens to him. Two, and in one, let's roll. Get yourself worked up now. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> what? You think a soda will get you on my good side? Hey, you're thirsty, right? Here we go. What the? What is it now? Well, uh, something's grabbing my hand. What? I said something inside here is grabbing my hand. Oh, Harry, the Gregory Peck Act is a bit outdated, don't you think? I'm serious. <laughs> So I put that in the link uh, in the info bar for you. Also, Activision. Let's talk about this. And this is very upsetting. Activision confirms that there's a new, innovative Call of Duty coming from Infinity Ward this year. Right? Okay. So as we know, the Call of Duty machine is still going. Now here's the thing. Layoffs hit Activision following weaker Guitar Hero and Skylanders performance. 
That's right. Now, first off, we knew that you had already milked the hell out of Guitar Hero. And this new Guitar Hero was going to be a problem. It didn't do well. We knew it wasn't going to do well. We saw it the way it was, you know, it was being made, that it wasn't going to sell well. You threw so much money when it came to advertising, getting Lenny Kravitz, you know, and, 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 and James Franco to start playing in it. And it was absolutely ridiculous. Not to mention the bands that are featured in this game, all right? And all that live shooting, you know, for those fans. So, of course, it was going to cost a lot of money. For especially a... Uh, you know, for a, a, a genre that's right now is very weak. If you've been watching Rock Band as well, they've been taking a lot of hits themselves. Of course, Mad Cat's laying off people. So, it was to show you that both of these type of genre, you know, in this genre, both of the franchises that are going head-to-head -head are both taking losses. However, when it comes to Skylanders, remember that report not too long ago where parents was like, I would buy Skylanders for my kid because they can play with toys. And we were like, well, technically they're not toys. They're just statues. You just look at them. The kids can't really play with them. You know what I mean? And we said that, you know, with Disney Infinity and all these other Lego dimensions, everyone has their own little, you know, thing now that's in this same genre now who have bigger IPs. You know what I mean? More popular, more well-known characters. And Skylanders is taking a hit. So Activision, once again, you're putting all your eggs in this basket when it comes to Call of Duty. Once again, because you think it's going to still sell. But when it comes to competition in other genres and games, you fail every time. Skylanders brought you in a lot of money from the beginning. Now, since it's failing, you want to lay people off. Once again, Guitar Hero, you milked the shell of it early back in the day, and that's what killed the genre. You helped kill the fucking genre. And then, what happened? Now you're trying to bring it back, and it's still failing. At this point, Activision, you have to take, and I think that your CEO, or I believe that you got a new CEO, didn't you? Uh, you were going to fire Kotick, but you didn't. Um, it's time for the people in charge and head. It's, we just talked about this last week, about employees being laid off while big-time CEOs get paid more. It's time to take some responsibility. It just is. And it's sad that we're still seeing this. So just keep laying people off, and it's not that big of a deal because the product isn't doing well. So you've got to be kidding me. So I play like this. <clears throat> the people who should be doing their job, and I play like this. It's not the developers because obviously we haven't seen any problems that may, you know, glitches or problems with Skylanders to the point where people are saying, I'm walking away from this. No, they either went to the competition or they got tired of playing the game. So maybe it's a you know, not creative thing. It could also be the produ not the production company, the publishing company who's giving the advertisers because I haven't seen a uh, Skylanders commercial or an ad and I don't know how long. So if you're not promoting it, then guess what? People are going to forget about it. I still see Lego Dimensions. I still see, just not too long ago, so what? Lego Avengers. I still see Disney Infinity. I still see all these type of commercials, but I don't see any Skylanders. So, I think it's a problem with your advertising department. Or maybe you're not giving them any more money than it comes from the publisher. I mean, there seems to be a lot of responsibility all around that can be, you know, held, you know taken. And I feel as though, once again, once the little guy, developers or whoever, are getting the shaft kind of sad. It is. Anyways, I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> I've had some, as you can see, upsetting moments. I've laughed. Oh, God, Dante. Oh, poor, poor Dante. Uh, <laughs> I just think as though this, this week has been really bad due to the fact that you're still having people who you praise fuck your community over, and you're okay with it. Like I said, I think it's at this point, it's time for the old guard, especially when they do all this gatekeeping, Carol. It's time for them to move on. It's time for the new blood to take over and let them have their time. I really feel that. That's what it is. It's kind of sad that we're still seeing people try to, you know, strive for relevance. And it's like, dude, it's, it, you think about it. Like I said, well, all the things that we go through in life, in real life, you know what I mean? The last thing I'm thinking is that I'm going to lose my soul over losing in a fucking video game. You don't get the, the priorities are fucked. They are. And if people want to keep praising this type of shit, then it goes to tell you what the future is going to hold. These type of people, they need... When someone says some shit like that, you know what it says? Stop playing video games. Force them to go outside. Take the games away from them. Force them to go the fuck outside. For, you know what I mean? Like, force them to look at reality. Lost your soul. I wish someone would say that shit to my face. That, that, that's, that's... I believe you. Someone says that, you gonna look like, the fuck? And you know what? It may follow up with a slap. Fuck wrong with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wake up. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. Lose your soul over a video game. Over a video game. Okay. Alright, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Get mad. 
be happy, whatever, I don't care at this point. You can't deny the fact, and I don't give a shit about how much passion you have for it, how much training went into this. When you say some shit like that, you're fucking wrong. Bottom line, I'm done.